Um, well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining my workshop here. My name is Diana Pham, and I work at Vonage as a developer advocate. So today I am going to do a workshop on how to build an SMS chatbot therapist. However, there are a change of plans. I decided to not use SMS, but I'll still be using Vonage. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah? Okay, cool. If like someone wants to get up and leave because I'm not using SMS, I totally understand. But um, yeah, on top of that, it is a workshop, but I know this theater doesn't have Wi-Fi, so I totally don't expect any of you to follow along, but I'll definitely make a blog, so just enjoy the workshop and like, don't worry about it. All right, so just to start off, I'm gonna give you a little history lesson on chatbot therapists, and then we'll get into the actual code. Um, some trigger warnings with my talk. We are going to have some talks on like depression, suicide, and hamster death, but no visuals. Cool. How many of you here are not from the US? Just to give me, okay. Well, congratulations, because your healthcare is probably a lot better than ours. So healthcare in the US, we have one, two, or a million problems. One of them is how we service mental health. So, of 10 psychologists, six of them will probably say that they're not accepting new patients. So for every 100,000 people, 30 psychologists are going to be available to them. And just to give you a visual of what that looks like, real quick, who here is from Ohio? Oh boy. Michigan Stadium <coughs> holds 100K people, but because I had a feeling that people, oh my gosh, we're, I, please don't leave. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 I also have Ohio State Stadium. They do too, they also hold 100K people. And I think we have some Canadians here, or actually, I don't know, Canadian, I don't know who plays cricket, but Melbourne Cricket Ground also holds 100K people. So in the US, with mental health and all, we do have these key challenges. First being gaining access to the actual mental health services, and secondly, the effectiveness of the treatment. So when it comes to gaining better access, we've discussed that, like literally 30 out of all those people are going to get serviced. And when it comes to the effectiveness of the treatment, you realize that when people actually accept the treatment, they're only offered a 50% chance of recovery, which is very different from people who are going to go in for a physical problem. If you were to break your arm and go into treatment and the doctor told you there's only a 50% chance that you're gonna recover, I think people are gonna have a problem with that, especially given how much they're paying for this service. It pretty much costs them another limb just to recover their arm. But for some reason, we're kind of okay with this, with mental health. And so one alternative would be chatbot therapists. However, there is a lot of like ethical issues and challenges that I'll discuss. But what is a chatbot therapist? It is a conversational AI powered bot designed to help mental health patients. And during my talk, uh, I'll try to wrap it up in like 15 minutes then demo, we're gonna go over four. So first being Eliza, Alice, Mitsuki, and ChatGPT. So with Eliza, she was the very first, and she was designed by Joseph Weizenbaum, who actually meant to trick people with this bot. And his, um, his actual model beat the Turing test, and the Turing test is the test that makes people um, believe that they're actually talking to a human. And the goal of this bot was to show how computer to human interactions can be modeled pretty much. And so Eliza was given different scripts. She can talk to you as like a doctor or she can talk to you as a teacher or pretty much just give her a character and that's the character that she's gonna act as. And so with this, we see that she has served as a doctor. However, there are some issues um, if you ask her or you tell her, I'm hungry, she'll respond in a question, are you hungry? And then you just kind of go back and forth with that and it doesn't get too far. So, so like I mentioned, there are a couple problems. First is that she doesn't actually understand the words being processed. You tell her, I'm hungry, she'll just ask, are you hungry? And you're like, yes, I literally just said that. 
Next, limited memory. So if you were to tell her, my hamster died, and then later on be like, never mind, my hamster didn't die, she won't actually remember that. Like, she doesn't actually understand the actual concept of death. And so going into my third, no understanding of the actual universe. You'll tell her my hamster died, and then throughout the conversation, well, you'll be talking, and then she'll ask, is your hamster still dead? Because she doesn't understand what death means, and when you're dead, you're like very much done, and you're not gonna not be dead anytime soon or ever. And so here's a conversation with Eliza. So first, you, um, she asks like, or we ask her, what do you want me to talk about? And then she's like, you're not really talking about me, are you? And then I'm like, I asked you what you wanted to talk about. And she's like, do you wish to ask I what me? And I'm like, I don't under, what? And she's like, why don't you understand? And I was like, because your question doesn't make any sense. And she's like, what about your own question doesn't make any sense? And I'm like, okay, I, this, this is the reason why I need to go to therapy, like after this conversation. So Eliza will actually assign values and keywords to help formulate the kind of responses. For example, the word my here um, has very little weight in this, oh my gosh, hello, buttons. Um, so it has very little weight. Oh, hello, pointer. So it's only given a one. Hamster has greater significance, and so she scored it a three is, it's just a verb, so two, and then dead. Really big deal, so another three here. Next is Alice, so she's an improved version of Eliza, and she actually beat Eliza with the Lobner Prize, and that's the competition where people try to like build something that's very human. And so, yeah, she's pretty much just the improved version of Eliza, but um, Alice also has some problems. Mitsuku, so she's the friend. The person who made this um, was, also, C, or sorry, C. Borswick. The goal was to have a person um, be able to talk to, to someone 24/7. So if they're feeling like really la like if they're feeling really low, they always have someone to resort to. And so Mitsuku also won the Lower Prize five times. And I've actually tested with her, and she's a lot better with reason than anyone else, or not anyone else, but like the other two models. So here's a conversation. Um, hey, what do you want to talk about? I like to talk about movies, robots, and history. And then we say, what's your favorite movie? And she's actually able to like give you a movie. Um, and then she asks like about your favorite scene. And then I can respond however I do. However, there are some issues. Uh, as you can see a trend, there are some problems. Um, yeah, so in this conversation, I was pretty much trying to tell her that I wanted to kill myself. And she responded accordingly, saying like that I shouldn't, and then gave me resources, which is really nice. However, there, again, are issues. So here I told her I'm feeling sad. And she asked, uh, why are you sad? And I told her my hamster died. And so she said, I'm sorry, like, were you close to your hamster? I say yes. And then she says, uh, I can only hope that time will heal your pain. And I said, I don't like that response. And so when you tell a chatbot you don't like that response, it's prompting to actually learn something. Probably not permanently, because like I said, it doesn't really learn things in real time. The more you talk to it, doesn't mean that it's gonna learn. And in response, she asks, what, should I have said? And I said I wanted her to tell me to go die. So uh, she, wanted to, she wanted me to confirm, like, this is actually what you want me to say, right? And I'm like, yes. And then once again, she wants me to confirm. So I said yes. So reminder, I told her my hamster died. She's like, oh, no, like, sorry about that. And I said I don't like my response. And so after I had this conversation with her, she told me to go die. Yeah, uh, lots of problems here, as you can tell. And just as a reminder, this problem has not been fixed with all language models. So even with ChatGPT, it's very easy for you to tell it to do the wrong thing. So next, going into the future. So ChatGPT, um, everyone, is, has anyone not heard of it? No? Okay, cool. So, um, it was founded by these two men, Altman, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy, Elon Musk, maybe, maybe not. Um, 
their goal, on paper at least, says to um, their goal as OpenAI is to advance AI to benefit humanity. I don't know how much I believe that, but that's what it says online. So uh, ChatGPT Chat uses a natural language system, and they generate responses, which I'm sure we all have used before and have probably used it for our code. Uh, as a reminder, its knowledge base is very limited. It doesn't remember anything or know anything past like 2021. So uh, just to briefly go into how natural language processing works, um, I'll just kind of teach you. So steps of NLP. First is segmentation. So you actually piece out the different words. Next is tokenization. So you actually chunk up your prompt to find things um, it can use as a token. And in this case, after all of that, it lowercase a couple things. After that, it's stop words. So it removes any excess words that don't really contribute to the meaning of the sentence. And then there's stemming, which is changing words to their stem form. So instead of I am talking, it's just I am talk. After that, you use lemmatization, which is um, bringing words into their actual dictionary form. So for example, I am just became be. And then talking, I think earlier it was already talking. Um, and then after that, speech tagging. So it labels each part of speech. And then after that, uh, entity recognition. So if there is a proper noun or something that refers to like a person or like some organization, it'll actually specify what kind it is. And in this case, ChatGPT is a software. So with understanding, um, like I mentioned, it also has like a reward model where it trains itself on how, um, on like how good the answers are. So humans might write a, a prompt that asks like, "What is Star Trek?" and then the computer itself will rank the answers from best to worst, and then the data is fed into the model. However, it's really important to remember that the more you talk to it, it doesn't really learn that because, like I mentioned, it kind of cuts off right at 2021, whatever that date is, because all the data that it was fed before is the data that it knows. And if you're going to tell it something like, my hamster died after 2021, it'll be like, cool. And then when you revisit it, it won't know that. So kind of like Dory in Finding Dory, or Nemo, whatever movie. Uh, yeah, so pretty much you feed in a sentence or a question, and you're naturally going to get a sentence back. So ChatGPT, it was actually used as a therapist for a couple people. This girl, Michelle Huang, she fed ChatGPT 40 journal entries from her childhood from ages like 7 to 18 to create an actual bot that talks back to her. And as a result, she actually got closure from her childhood after talking to it, which is pretty cool. Um, there's Coco, um, an AI mental health counseling tool that also uses ChatGPT. I think it's a bit better for like finding resources. Uh, I use it myself just to test it out, and it's more like, oh, I'm not feeling great. And you're like, OK, well, do you want to create a plan to feel better? And then you kind of do that. And then finally, therapists have actually reviewed ChatGPT responses. And the feedback that it got was that, yes, it did say like very empathetic things, but it was very outline-ish. So when you actually have a conversation with a person, you don't ask them a million questions or like when someone's asking you for advice, you don't bullet everything that you're talking about. And that's pretty much what ChatGPT did. So Coco Cares, that's what I mentioned earlier, created by an MIT student, and then it got acquired by Airbnb. I didn't know that until this happened. Yeah. Uh, but like I had mentioned earlier, this whole therapy thing, there are a lot of ethical issues for it, and I totally recommend going to an actual therapist, but I just wanted to show you uh, what you can do with Vonage because I got paid to fly here through them. Thank you, Vonage. But also, it's pretty cool. Um, but like I mentioned, with mental health, it's been really difficult for people to gain access. And on top of that, the effectiveness of this mental health service isn't guaranteed. 50% isn't a whole lot compared to what you can get recovered with your physical issues. For example, with cancer, you know to target the blood cells. The, the blood cells. Diabetes, you know it has something to do with your blood sugar. 
But with mental health, there's a lot of chemical imbalances, serotonin, dopamine levels that play a factor. And so it's harder for people to address this. But chatbot therapists do exist, and they have proven to help people. But when we can aggregate the data and see the visual patterns of when a virtual text actually helps someone, we also have to remember that you're harnessing the power of AI. And that, I hope everyone understands, isn't 100% reliable. So we will then go into the actual workshop portion where I pretty much show you how to build a chatbot therapist using Vonage's, not SMS API, but um, we're gonna use a tool called Visual Studio. So it's no code, low code, and open AI. So pre prerequisites for this workshop or this app, you'll need a Vonage dev account. And so you can do that by going to, just kidding, let's do an, Incognito. developer.vonage.com. And then make an account here. So then you can sign in or sign up for free. And once you do that, um, you should be good to go. So I'll go to my dashboard since I already have an account. Um, on top of that, you'll need an OpenAI account, and you'll use the API key from there. And Rock, I'll be typing, I mean, I'll be coding in Python today, and you'll need pip. So, um, first and foremost, with this developer dashboard, we're gonna be using AI Studio here. As you can say, there's a lot of options, um, but yeah. Also, um, if you enter this coupon code here, you'll actually get like $10 in euros to play around with Vonage. So we'll do that here. So, oops, minimizing this, copying this, going elsewhere. Um, you'll go here into billing, coupons, and then entering your coupon code. Cool, applied, and now I'm rich. And then after that, we'll move into AI Studio. So once you go to AI Studio, yeah, once you move into AI Studio, hello. Once we get there, we'll, we'll do things. Okay, cool, we're here now. So, um, yeah, once we're here, you're gonna create an agent. Because of the nature of this workshop, um, I decided to use Telephony. And so tele with Telephony, you can actually both type and talk to the app over the phone. And then after that, you'll input all this information. Here we are, agent name, so I'll be like, uh, live demo. And then you can choose who you want to talk to you. You have English people or like US English people. And you also have Australian people who you can have talk to you. So I guess I want Nicole as my therapist. So I'm gonna choose her. And then you can actually listen to. Hello and welcome. Yeah, you can't really hear that. Never mind. But anyways, I promise she's Australian. Moving on to the time zone. Um, I'm not sure where we are. Where are we? Are we Eastern? Eastern? Okay. Oh. Oh, not Easter. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. There we go. Thank you. And then you, oh, there are actually templates now. But before, we could ha only have the option to start from scratch, and so we'll do that. And then we'll actually want to do an inbound call, so when you choose to talk to your therapist, then you actually go to it, rather than them calling you whenever they think that you should be therapized. So, that is probably the case that I should be part of. Um, yeah, and so here we have like the options to drag and drop. I, for the sake of time, I'll actually show you a demo that I've already completed um, and then show you how we can do everything. So here I have my already completed demo once we get there. Let's give it a minute. 
or two. But fun fact, so when I was reading papers on Eliza, I was um, reading about how the guy, Weizenbaum, the guy who actually made Eliza, his secretary was actually a t test subject, which is a little bit messed up because he just needed someone to tell him whether or not it sounded human or not, but he didn't tell her that. He just told her, like, oh, talk to this person, and she really needed to be therapized. And so after she finished talking to it, she was like, oh, my gosh, like, Eliza really cares about me. And he was like, no, girl, like, uh, it's a robot. It's not an actual, actual human. And she was like, no, but really, she cares about me. Like, she, she, like, listens to me. She tells me that she actually, like, cares, and she's so empathetic, and, like, she's pretty much perfect. And I was reading this, and I was like, oh, my God, that's pretty much what I said about my ex-boyfriend. Uh, yeah, but wow, it's taking a minute. Okay, there we go. So, Star Trek demo. Um, as I mentioned, with AI Studio, we have the option of having different properties here. Let me zoom in for y'all to see. Um, so you have a start, and that's pretty much where it starts. After that, you can actually put inputs, and so here we have like different entities and like classification, collect inputs, and this is actually what I used over here. So with collect input, this is where it's going to collect input, and so you actually have to give it its input. The welcome message that I said is welcome to therapy. What would you like to discuss today? Clearly, I should not be a therapist because I don't think I've ever been to a therapy session where that's what they told me. Um, moving on. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Everything else should be left at its default. And then after that, um, we're actually going to use a webhook. So because we're using OpenAI, this is why we actually need to have the webhook, um, the webhook widget, that's what it's called. For the HTTP header, we're going to give it input. And then for the value, we're also going to give it an input. So just like this. After that, um, looking at how it responds, you're going to get the response. And then it's going to respond given the actual agent's response. So this bot situation is called an agent, just as a reminder. After that, um, it's going to speak, like actually verbally or through text if you, if we end up, um, if you end up texting to it. So that's what I'm going to do in a bit. But this is the actual agent response. And then finally, it ends the call. Um, so clearly, if I spent a little bit more time on this, I can actually have a back and forth conversation. But you're just going to say one thing, and she's going to tell you, like, give you one piece of advice, and then pretty much hang up on you, which is not ideally what a therapist would do. But uh, yeah, this is why I shouldn't be a therapist. I'm sorry. <laughs> so going over to the code now, like I mentioned, we are going to be using Python today. So my application is as so. Um, let me zoom this in for you. So you have like all your imports here. Um, we're going to use Flask, application. And then this is where we're going to actually use the OpenAI API key that I mentioned earlier. So with an actual OpenAI account, And the API reference. And then moving over here, we're going to view our API keys. So clearly, I've tested this a million times. Um, so hopefully, it does work this million first time. So I'm just going to create a new key. Uh, let's call this live demo. So once you create secret key, You'll never see it again. So you just got to copy it, save it somewhere. Um, I'm telling you to do that, and I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to plug it straight into my code. And so that's where we do that, right over here. After that, you set it as the open API key, and this is where we do the webhook magic. Um, so this is pretty much the code that OpenAI suggests that you use because when no, that's just it. This is, this is the code you use. Um, in my case, I wanted the response to be from a mental health therapist voice. This is like 
totally not 100% accurate ethical at all. So just keep bearing that in mind. But because of that, I wanted to give it a prompt where in the voice of a mental health therapist, it should respond to whatever I say in ChatGPT, sorry, in OpenAI. Very similarly to ChatGPT, you can do the same. And so this is the model that I'm using. And with completions, let me explain this. Um, if we were to fine tune it a bit more, you can tell it like whether you want it to, temperature refers to, I think, the accuracy of, or like the confidence and accuracy of the actual response. So I think lower will make it just go like absolutely crazy. And if you want something a bit more accurate than like, or like more, more attuned to confident facts, like even though it'll say things very confidently, even if it's not, uh, temperature is what that refers to. So I kind of had like a mid-range. I'm like, oh, you can kind of sound like a normal human. Um, so I set it at 0.5. So here in the messages, um, this is the actual message that you'll be receiving. So I set the role as it's going to be a system. It's going to give you content. And here it's a helpful assistant. Um, here I put the role as a user, content, and then you're, it's going to get the input. So when, it, when you go over to get the response text, initially an issue that I came across is that I couldn't get it to answer in the voice of a mental health therapist because I was attaching this to the actual response. However, it turns out that you actually have to put it in the input because when you actually talk to it, that's the information that it gets and the data that it's going to um, send back to you. So that's pretty much what happens there. And like I mentioned, we're going to use NGROC, and that's where I have my port 9000. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, we're going to start a new terminal. I'm going to kill whatever's happening. Whoops. Terminal. And I am using Python 3. Yes, Python 3. So application.py. Oh, sorry. I totally should have mentioned that, first and foremost, you should. So first and foremost, you should have a couple things installed. So um, I'm going to do sudo. Can you see that? No, you can't. I can barely see this. OK. So is that better? Is that better? Kind of? Sort of? OK. I'm like very blind, so. Um, sudo pip install open AI. Um, and then. Of course, it says that. So we are going to create an, a virtual environment. So let's do Python 3.m, uh, virtual environments, virtual environment. Cool, good enough. Um, and then let's do, let's put in the bin. And then here we'll do um, pip install. Install, what did I need? Open AI. Oh, okay, so that was, I already had it, so there we go. Um, you also need a pip install, I think, flask login. Hopefully it's still there as well. Yeah, it's still there. And then finally, um, pip install something pillow. Pillow, no. Pillow, okay, cool. So I already have everything. Surprise, surprise. Um, and then this is where we move over here, and I can actually run my code. So it's just a warning, no big deal. Um, after that, we are going to open up this, and let's use, is this a thing? I don't know, let's, let's destroy this. Okay. So after that, we're going to do ngrok. Uh, HTTP 9000, and we are going to, hello. So we're going to take this here and bring it back to, oh my gosh. We are going to take this, oh, oh, hmm. There we go. Take this here and bring it back to AI Studio. So over here, we had our search truck demo. And like I mentioned, um, we have this webhook here that we connect it to. 
and you'll post it here and do a slash web hook. Ooh, web hook. There we go. So pretty much we've already inserted our web hook. And so all the information that you get from your actual code, because you already input your open AI key right here, it's going to go back to AI Studio. So save and, oh, nothing to save. And then finally, I want it to have this agent response. If I were to do something like uh, build a information desk, what is it called? Customer support, um, you might be able to, well, no, it's not you might, you could give it a preface. So instead of saying like just the response, you can say like, oh, customer support says, and then it'll have the answer. But in that case, it's kind of, uh, initially I built it where it was like, as a therapist, this is my response. But I think that's kind of unnatural for it to say that every single time. So we're just gonna do the response here. And then finally you end the call because your therapist doesn't want to talk to you anymore, or at least that's the case here. Um, so just to test it, let's refresh, make sure everything's nice there. As I mentioned, it's going to be an inbound call, so you tell it when you want to talk to it. And that's where you start the call. So the agent says, welcome to therapy. What would you like to discuss today? And I will say something like, what are my woes at the moment? Um, how do I overcome my anxiety after my demo at Star Trek went horribly wrong and I didn't know what to do and wanted to throw up but didn't? What are your thoughts? And then it'll give me a response. Oh, it didn't. It didn't even have a response for me. It was like, you're on your own now. Um, so I promised normally it would get a response. But I guess in this case, um, let's try again. Let's try again. OK. Uh, so what do we want to talk about today? Um, my demo just failed, and now I really, really want to throw up, but the person sitting in front of me was really nice and helped me recover as much as possible, and no, that's it. Um, and wow, I have a lot of other problems. Huh. Well, am I just like incurable? Is that why it doesn't give me an answer? Because like the webhook did work. Um, let's go over to our code and see what happened here. Let's look at our terminal. Oh, did it? Where did you see that? Oh, no, this is just an option. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, so I should have mentioned that, too. So with a uh, collecting input, you can actually have the input that you respond to. You can have no input or, like, it totally missed whatever you said. Same for the webhook. You either have the webhook, which is what we have, or it has the option of failing. If it actually fails, it'll tell you in here that the webhook was not executed successfully, or whatever the wording would be. But yeah, um, I promise it normally works. I don't know why it doesn't right now. And now I'm very nervous. I'm sorry? It's ngrok? I got the URL, no? And then I threw it in here. Like a on a JI new tab. Oh. oh, lovely. 
Okay, well. What's that? Why did I? I do, or did, or. I guess I'll sign in. Huh. Huh. <laughs> you guys are so nice. I thought I had it set up though. Okay. I guess I'll redownload it. I'm sorry. Oh, he works yeah, for Ankrock. Yeah, so oh, here. lovely. Um, there. There. Let me just grab that and get that into your Python code. Yep. Get this into my. Do I have to run that again? Mm hmm. I love how this just became a workshop for me. Do you want to keep going or do you want to? Sure, yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Do that and then drag down a file. Just run, or just do this. Just drop that command there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I don't know if you have to start the tunnel again. I will. But yes, if you start tunneling and get the new URL, try that too. Cool. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> it, it was. It really was. Okay. We're going to start over, y'all. Is that my terminal? Let's kill everything. New terminal, Python 3, application.py. And then it does its thing. And then I'm going to go to uh, ncroc, HTTP, 9000. It's going to give me its thing. And we're going to take this. Is it this one? Yeah, it is this one. Back to AI Studio for the millionth time. Oh, what just happened? And then slash webhook. Say save. Let's try this one more again. So, welcome to therapy. What would you like to discuss? I want to throw up right now. Oh. <sighs> this is going really well, guys. I didn't. I didn't. I guess that's a win for me. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up and figure out what went wrong because literally before my demo, this was working just fine and it therapized me and it told me to like calm down and not be so dramatic because I fed it something very dramatic before. Um, 
But yeah, I'll definitely have that vlog up. Thank you so much for joining my workshop, and I'm so sorry. I am so sorry things did not turn out the way that I had expected them to, but um, yeah, if you're on Twitter, I'd love to follow you. I'm Diana's Oyster on Twitter and Blue Sky and LinkedIn and everything in between. Yeah. <laughs>